Welcome back guys, this is Mavry here with another episode of Sangatsu the Lion. Uh, so yeah, in the last episode we got some pretty interesting developments, particularly between Rei and Kyoko. You know, I did know that they had a complicated relationship, but I wasn't really expecting that, and it might even be a little bit more complicated than I initially thought, right? Things are definitely not as clear-cut and dry as um, our initial impressions tell us and that's probably something that's going to be happening throughout the series as well um beyond that well we still got chess matches on our hands ray still needs to pick himself up a little bit you know we haven't i was just going through the opening earlier and it's been quite a while since we've seen the kamoto sisters as well right uh but i don't know from last time we saw them it seemed that uh they're waiting for Ray to pick himself up first, you know, get get back on track again. So um, perhaps it's going to be still quite a bit while more before we see them. Watch as we just see them in this episode, right? But anyways, let's get into the episode. All right, I skipped the opening. Let's begin in three, two, one, play. Running through the night. Okay, before we get... I guess before we get back to chess, we gotta get through schoolwork. After school purchase club? Oh. Soap isn't actually that hard to make. Okay. Lemon. What's that? Herbs? Mint? <laughs> Yay. It's such a sob story. <laughs> well, yes, technically, yes. I've said this before and I'll say it again, this is a damn good teacher.
that's actually a really interesting concept that I love that. It, because that is so damn true. And honestly, it's something that, you know, I only learned as I got older. Run, run through the night. Man, I'm actually getting... Anyways, that one hit a little bit home to me. Oh, he won. Smirk, smirk. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's just one more in terms of the don't let your initial impressions fool you. Congrats, you got a title! That just might be enough to bump him up to knife then. Oh wait! Okay, never mind. I guess. Okay, after they go through this, then they need to go through the uh, the incubate. <laughs> and now we can finally get a glimpse of this Soyo guy. And club back home. Do it for the kids. Did he also become young all of a sudden? <laughs><笑> 
ためにまけると悔しいのはなんてだと思いながら、目を背けていたわけです。そのはずの彼は、桐山。よ、桐山。一人、両足を踏みしめている。That's what you need to do. He knows he's got something to say. Take me under your tutelage. Your workshop. Yay! Yeah, you'll probably get very excited by it. Hmm. What are we doing now? And hey, it didn't make an appearance, I just realized. <laughs> I was having some withdrawal symptoms from not seeing them so long. Oh, girls festival. Eh, I'm kind of meh on that. You might be showing up in just a second. Oh, never mind. He's going to the workshop.
Sounds like lots of kids. Just these three. Oh, yeah, one more. I still don't completely like the translation of workshop. I still feel study group is better, but This voice I actually recognize. I actually really like this voice actor. <laughs> it's basically saying that they have preferred um, methods of utilizing their rooks. Different camps, if you will. Oh. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna. <laughs> I 
With that being said, I do wonder how useful it would be with such a big disparity in ranks. Just go with it. Oh, well, you guys are easily distracted. Well, at least they're doing something together. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> ah, see you guys after this. Okay, so not really sure what was going on at the very end there, but I guess, you know, all things, when you break it down, we should just be glad that Ray is having more interactions with other human beings, right? And his fellow peers as well. And they're a good bunch, so yay for him. But uh, more to the point, I like to... You know, for this entire episode, I really only like to focus on one subject, and that is uh, at the beginning of this episode where um, Haya, Hayashida Sensei was actually, you know, teaching some some life lessons to Rei. And by the way, I just, I just want to mention this again. That is a damn great teacher. Um, more teachers should be like him. That is the kind of teacher that you will remember uh, for your lifetime, right? So just putting that out there and like he's awesome um but you know even more something that really hit home to me was you know his life lesson of this episode and that you know the, the part where he says uh you know you have to learn to rely on others um or else they will not rely on you right and this is like so true um i can't even begin to 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 say how how this hit hits home with me you know, we could now let, let me let me be very clear here. This is not just a simple case of saying, you know, um, I'll scr you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, or you know, that kind of give and take kind of situation, right? It's not just as simple as uh, reciprocating um, a favor or something like that. It's it's more than that. It's actually just as he said, one of the foundations of human relationships, and honestly, a life lesson that I could have used earlier on in my life as well, because. You know, honestly, it's kind of counterintuitive if you think about it. Why is it that um, by relying on others, by, by you know, you, you actually uh, gain relationships this way, right? Um, and it's actually doubly hard for me as well, um, since I am a very, very independent person. And one of my life principles, one of my life philosophies is to try to uh, do my best to not inconvenience others. That Like, that is a personal thing, my life goals, my life morals. But that is actually, um, you know, in a sense, completely opposite of what I, what, we should be doing if we really do want to have healthy relationships with other people um and like i said that's something that i did not uh learn until very later on in my life now um and it's true it's absolutely true uh you know 
I actually later on, only later on, uh, found out about this, and then I also read some, I guess, some sort of psychological, uh, you know, the, the psychological mechanisms behind this. It's it's really funny in in a sense. Be, the basic theory is that because if when you, uh, for instance, when you rely on somebody else. Um, they will also, in a turn, like the human psychology, think that you are indebted to them somehow. But that uh, coming with that uh, indebtedness is their willingness to open up to you, right? They they consider you part of their inner circle now, uh, in a sense. I mean, not inner circle as in friends, but they allow you into their life. Um, if we're going by a very nerdy type of interpretation, any Evangelion watchers here? Uh, you know how everybody has their AT field and whatnot. Well, well, let's just say we all have our barriers, right? And actually, by by relying on somebody else, by asking a favor or something like that, it actually helps lower these barriers. And so you then you can step into their lives, and then that would be the beginning of a friendship, right? It's I don't know. It, it was super. It's super unintuitive to me. I don't know how other people feel. To me, that. It took quite a bit of time to wrap my head around that kind of concept, and honestly, I only learned that like, like well, I mean, I've I've said this many times before, but I'm probably uh, older than you guys think I am. Um, um, and with that being said, you know that only came very later on in my life, and well. It, I would say it's also an ongoing work for me, right? Because like I said, it, it kind of goes against my life philosophy. So I'm not that kind of person that can just so easily you know, impose on others or, or you know, rely on others. That's something that I also need to work on. But, you know, I have to keep on telling myself it's not a case of showing weakness. It's not a case of inconveniencing others. But in a sense, it's also a two-way you know, opening a two-way, um, a two-way, a two-way tunnel, or or whatever you want to call it, between you and the other person. So, now I don't know how many. I presume most people who are watching this are probably younger than me. And if there is any a case where you know you feel you are struggling to make friends or whatnot, or what is it that you're doing wrong? You, you seem to be you know, minding, taking good care of your own business. Your life is, is for the most part, good. You, you take care of yourself and so on and so forth. Like, not even race situation, right? But, you know, why is it that it's so hard to, to make friends and whatnot? You know, try something like that. It's actually, um, it's actually been psychologically, there is a psychological theory behind it. Um, and I believe there are something, there are a few videos talking about this phenomenon on YouTube as well. So that is, you know, I was kind of surprised to see that kind of life lesson in, in this one, which is really more of a, I, I wouldn't want to say shonen work, but you know, it's, it's still a, a relatively mainstream anime and whatnot. And this is not at all like the sort of, you know, life lessons of friendship or or love and so on and so forth right this is actually 100 percent real so and it's actually something that hit home very close to home for me so uh i was kind of um and i i just it, to me it just because of the case of how i can easily relate with this it it i don't know what to say i like i really enjoyed the fact that they they brought this up and actually tried to teach people about it. Right? I would presume that the main audience for, as with all anime work, is probably uh, teenagers, maybe young adults or whatnot. And this is definitely something that will be of use in life, particularly if you're not a, a particularly an ex uh, extroverted person, if you're more introverted, and also if you're like me and tries to be self-sufficient and self-reliant. Right. But, you know, good life lesson. Good life lesson. Uh, as with, honestly, a lot of the stuff that this series is talking about, right? Um, I, I do feel like this is, you know, it's, it's being, it's actually teaching some very good concepts without being, um, showing it in a very preachy way, if you will. Um, and so that's, I think, another part of this main strength of this series. And I guess I can see why people would... Uh, consider it life-changing in a sort of way if you really take its teachings to heart, uh, which you probably should. And everything I've seen so far, 
they make sense. They make sense. They're real. They're not some, you know, some romanticized um, imagining of real world relationships or, or, or moral values or whatnot. So two thumbs up from me. So I hope that didn't come up. That's too much of a ramble, but uh, I'm just very, very, I don't know, affected or something by, by this episode. But anyways, anyways, um, that's it for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.